So this is where we left the piece from the last video and it started to look to me like it was going to be a landscape after all that other work that happened with it. It's at last told me what it wants to become. So I'm going to use some acrylic ink here, mix it with some water just because I feel I need some darks, I need some flowing and I'm going to start with that and basically uh, see where it takes me. So I've gone over, grabbed uh, what was an old makeup sponge, I think. I wanted to dab it on rather than pour. I wanted a bit more control, especially at these final stages when you're trying to, you know, you can see it's going to become something. So you definitely need a bit more control as to what you want this to do. Now you'll see that in places the dark's going on, but there's other places where it's just beading up. And I'd forgotten that I'd put oils into the purple and white paints to make them um, give a special effect. And of course, because I put the oils in, it won't do what it needs to do. So I'll continue to try for a little while, just to see what other areas I can get it to, to see if the beading maybe gives me a nice effect. Sometimes the happy accidents are the best ones. So there's an area that really took the black, maybe overtook the black. So I'm deciding to try and spread that through a bit. Although I tell you what, that black does make the yellow pop above it. I think at this stage, I've just decided the purple and white is, is jarring against the rest of the colors and the, 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 the feel that I want from this piece or the, or the feeling that it's telling me it wants. So I've stopped trying to make it work down there. It's too frustrating. I know I want this piece, uh, to my mind and to yours, it might not look the same, but to me, that's a deep, dark loch. So I needed to get rid of some of the lighter in there and make that a really obvious, again, to me, space of deep, dark water. So just covering that over. And that's taking it well because the oil isn't there. So, you know, I've learnt um, how to move forward with that. Then... I've decided down here, it did take a bit, but I wanted to see if I could get some dripping going on. So I'm hoping you can you can just see that. And I do love sometimes just tilting to see what you get. There's no control in tilting really. It's just seeing where that moves through to. Went a long way, quite impressive. Letting that dry off a bit. And moving to a different part. Now I've got that lake or loch as as part of what I want. It's okay, that looks a bit plain to my mind. The sky is now again too bright, too turquoisey, needs to be defined more for me now. Looking through acrylic inks again, still gonna work, but the just the pure black too dark. So I'm putting a bit of blue in there. Again, it's just what you feel like, and I've got my trusty twig out giving it a mix through and let's just see what the twig can do sometimes the twig works great other times the twig just doesn't do what I want it to do or doesn't give the effect of what I want it to be So you can see here, it's starting to work, just scraping in some tree shapes. I prefer doing it with the twig quite often, you get a more natural look. If you do it with a paintbrush, you can quite often get um, sort of two obvious lines. Once I've got some sticky twiggy bits in then I may well go to a paintbrush in fact I think I do eventually but initially it's quite nice just to 
have the gnarliness of nature in your hands. As always, can't resist smudging a bit. Okay, so the feather, we have a lot of pheasants on the estate that I live. Um, so they drop their feathers, it's not, it's not cruel in any way. And again, they, they take away control from me. So it's splodgy, you know, I'd never draw a tree splodgy like that, but actually the lines, the indication, you know, our brain fills in so much of the gaps and this feels wonderful and right. Sometimes, again, the feather doesn't work, doesn't feel right, but I will use it all the time that it feels good to do. just added some more white into that mixture that I was using so the dark is great but in order to kind of show off the darks you need some contrast I'm going to put some gray bluey white color in there it's quite watery this mix so not not sure how well it was going to work and you'll see it, it has some impact but we definitely move on and do some more whites in there See that those those couple there, they were good marks. So the feather worked a bit, but I actually thought, oh, I wonder if it will work to put my indications of water in. I don't normally use a feather for this. So again, this is just listening to your brain. What does it want to do? Where does it want to move to? So for me, this is what it wanted to do. I quite like this, working well. Again, I guess the nice thing working with acrylics is you can always uh, go over it if you don't like it. So now that I've got the loch water in there, again, when you look at the picture, the the edge, the left-hand edge, just those trees or whatever they're going to be, they're trees to me, need more. There needs to be no, more structure in that to make it, again, clear that there's kind of an edge. So I'm trying white, just neat on there. I do like a bit of straw blowing again. A lack of control, where does the water move? What are the shapes going to be? So it's always worth experimenting and just playing. It's a good burst, look at that, it's lovely. Remembering again, if it doesn't go where you want or you look and you just think, oh, no, that's horrible. Then I can always lift off with tissue. I can go over with a different colour later on. You know, generally, if it's still wet, you can wipe it away. Just encouraging that to, to just move. These are marks I can't get with a paintbrush. I can't get with my fingers. So this happens a lot near an end of a piece, once I've got an awareness of what it's going to be, it's kind of adjusting the tonal quality of it. So the blacks were great, but they needed whites to lift them. Now the whites are there, but they're too white and they take away from the black. So I'm putting some blue in and it will start to mix with some of the black, some of the white, and we'll start to get different shades, different colours coming through in those trees, which is just really what I'm looking for they just needed to be a lot stronger so I said I might end up with the paintbrush coming out 
and here it is just trying to now blend those together I could have tried to use the straw to blow them but I've used that and to give you different marks give you different expressions it's really good to to mix up your tools and mix up what you're doing again just trying to highlight the edge where the water meets the land trying to make that clearer again if I was leaving it really abstract I wouldn't be clarifying these spaces they would be left to be whatever you want them to be but it, it just drew me to want to make this clearer make this a landscape and not just leave it to the viewer's eyes to to what it may not or may not be so adding in little twiggy bits here I don't particularly want these to be massive trees that's the whole piece on the left it's just about balancing out now and again clarifying that edge So I think I finished with those moving down, wanted to make those watermarks clearer. Again, now I've added white to various areas and added blues and blacks. The original feather ones I put in, they are just not strong enough for me. Typically then after I'd done them, they were too strong, I was taking them out of it. Again, this purple area now is still uh, very much jarring to me, trying some charcoal over those oily places and some white pastel seeing if I can just take away some of that edge to it. charcoal really not really doing what I wanted to do so I'm trying a wax crayon turquoise and as soon as I put that in there just wrong so it was you saw there it was just instantly wiped out thought about putting it somewhere else but no those pencils are not going to work for me you just sometimes know it feels wrong in your hands so what do I decide to do I know I don't like them so I can't ruin it because I don't like how it looks so I'm going to grab the acrylic ink, yellows, add some blues. And again, remember I've used that blue further up so I know from a color perspective, it's not gonna um, jar as much as maybe this, the, the overall purple has for me. So a normal paintbrush, rare that I use a normal paintbrush, but a normal one just to smear it in makes a lovely green colour popping it over to the other side just you know mixing up the darks and lights of what that creates instantly happier with that turning or toning down the purple so here is where you can sort of smear some bits off if they're too strong and then decided to get my stick back out and give us some grassy texture. It was too flat, too plain, too boring. So let's stick some tufts of grass across the piece. Again, the green is starting to look quite flat, quite boring, and you're in the foreground, so you want more of a, a pop of color. So I'm actually adding the bright yellow just directly to the stick and pulling it through. I do love making this mark. Sometimes it's overkill, but who cares? It's what I like doing. As a final touch, I added some interference paint. So that's brighter green, it actually tilts in the sunshine. 
so it will either look flat or you can get this nice um, fluorescent kind of look from it so I did it in the greens I added it in some in the sky because I've got blue and I added some purples as well just little hints of it not covering it they just I think give a really interesting effect to um to any painting so yeah just showing you those those final pieces Here's a video of the finished canvas. And then, just as a final thought, there's the final piece. Hope you enjoyed this. Bye for now.